Hi guys, this is Jared at the ranch in North Texas. Coming at you today from inside the barn. I want to do it outside today, but uh, it's a little windy and I want to make sure you can hear what we've got going on. Some questions I get asked a lot are, what kind of snaffle bit is the best? Uh, what kind of snaffle bit do you use? What do you suggest? That type of thing. So I wanted to go over a few things with you. I use uh, some different types of snaffle bits, uh, ring snaffles. Each horse is a little different and I want to address that. Each horse, uh, some horses work off of the bars, some work off the tongue, some work off of both. Some like a big mouthpiece, some like a small mouthpiece. So uh, I'll just go over a few of these bits here today. I've got some snaffle bit rigs hanging up here and kind of show you what we do here. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's the only way, but this is kind of what I've had success with here and uh, I'm going to keep doing it that way until I learned something different, something new, or uh, something better comes along. All right, here's a group of my snaffle bits. And if you'll notice, these are all brow band head stalls. Uh, means they have a band that comes around the brow uh, up and put the forelock over the top of it. They also have a strap back here that straps underneath their throat latch uh, to keep them from scratching this, uh, to rubbing up against something and uh, pulling this head stall off and dropping the bit. Uh, I like those uh, for my snaffle bit rigs because that's usually younger type horses that I'm riding with it and they're they're a little more secure. Um, I like the the Makati and the, and the slobber strap deal uh, on my snaffle bits. I think it helps me with my release, uh, gives that release a little faster. If you'll notice, I've got uh, like on this rig here, if I'm anytime, if I'm using a Martingale, which is about the only training aid, aid I use. Uh, I'll use that heavy single Makati and it does not have a lead on it. It's kind of a training Makati. I've got one down here on this one too. And you can see it has slobber straps and it's a little thicker and I have a martingale on that. All right, if you look right here, here's the most common one that I use. Uh, this is a D-ring snaffle. Uh, it's an English type D-ring. It's got a big side mouthpiece on it, side piece on the mouth, so that when I pull on this single rein on this side over here, this side does not go through the mouth of the horse. It also gives them a little indirect rein pressure, which is what I'm gonna use later when I start uh, showing these horses how to, to ride around with one hand. Uh, all of these snaffle rigs have a uh, bit hobble, underneath them so that if that horse opens its mouth and this does get in his mouth it will not slide all the way through his mouth there's just some different designs i i, I make all mine so i kind of like to do them in a little different fashion this here is also a d-ring this is a western d-ring it's got a little smaller side on it uh, about the same type of mouthpiece it's a little smaller in the middle so i'm going to get a little more action on the tongue on that one uh, both of these are a most of the pressure is on the bars of the mouth, and this tends to work really good with a horse that likes to ride off the bars. This next snaffle bit I'm gonna show you, this is also a D-ring, Western D-ring. It has a thick mouthpiece on it. Same principle all the way across on these three, but this has a thicker mouthpiece. It does not taper down in the middle. It stays the same size. You get a little more tongue pressure here with not as much, I'll say, bite. And uh, that works really good with some, some horses uh, that, that work off of bar pressure and don't need as much tongue pressure. Now we're here with the snaffle. This is a loose ring snaffle. Don't have very many loose rings. I don't like them a whole lot. Uh, just because I like that to be solid on the side so it pulls on the off side of the mouth a little bit instead of moving up and down. But I'll tell you, this one's a three-piece mouth. It's got a roller in the middle. Uh, this, is a, this is one that if a horse really doesn't like the bars of the mouth, riding off the bars of the mouth, this gives him more tongue pressure, gives him a little something to play with in there. But this is more of a tongue pressure uh, bit. And I have kind of three variations of that. Here's back to our Western D with a three-piece three mouth. It's called a dog bone, just like that other one. Now, the, the sides of this are a little thinner. You can 
get a little bar pressure on it, but again, this is more like a, a tongue pressure type bit. And a horse can also roll on those curb, I mean on those uh, rollers there and keep some sl saliva going in his mouth. Now this is also a D ring and it is a three piece mouth, but if you look, it's got big rings in it. I'm riding a little four year old right now that's real fidgety with the bit. Always chomping on it, always moving around, licking. And he really likes this bit. He really likes to move those rings and he can move them sideways and he can move them up and down. And it just helps him when he's fidgety. But again, this is what I, I would call more of a, a tongue pressure bit. And I wanna to talk to you just a second about the quality of your rigs. It's always nice to have a good quality snaffle rig. That doesn't mean it has to be expensive. Uh, this is a pretty expensive head stall here. It's got some rawhide work. It's got some handmade buckles. This is also a handmade bit, as are a few of these. Uh, they tend to cost a little more, but I can get exactly what I want. But this bit right here was an over-the-counter bit, and so was this one, the one that I use probably the most. I, I just look for the quality of the workmanship if it comes from a factory or it comes from an individual. Also look for uh, head stalls and things. Here's this is just a very simple leather working head stall. It's not as fancy as this one, doesn't have the handmade buckles in the rawhide, but it works just as well, as, as well as this Makati. This is a very inexpensive Makati. Uh, this is a fairly expensive Makati, but they both work the same principle. Uh, they, they use the same principles, they use the same mechanics, uh, so you can go in and get you a good snaffle rig for a hundred dollars or you can go in and get you a good snaffle rig for a couple of thousand Well, that about do it for today Hope you learned something off of that and kind of You know, I kind of try and use as many bits as I can uh, To fit a horse comfortably because the more comfortable they are when you're trying to teach them the more they're gonna learn They're they're a lot like people in that If you're not very comfortable, you're probably not gonna sit down long enough to learn something. So I'm trying to really work on horses that work better off the bars and work better off the tongue and a little bit of both. And I'm, I'm really trying to accommodate those horses where I can get the most done in the shortest amount of time and still have a fantastic horse. Always go out there and try to find out as much information as you can. Uh, try to learn as much as you can. Knowledge is power. Also, anything that uh, helps you respect and give dignity to your horses is, a, is the way to go. Because if you do that, they're going to do the same thing back to you. Hey, remember, while you're out there in this world, treat people the way you want to be treated. Sure makes things go a lot better. Until next time.